Oh, Albert, Albert, Albert. D -d -d this is me, Gerard, speaking to you, Albert. Howl, howl, howl. Oh, you are men of stone, Albert. You're a howl with this carry on yourself. I beg you, please, e even now, desist. Draw back. E even now. You you'll wreck the party, so you will. You're, you're showing frightful political immaturity. How sharper than a serpent's tooth it is to have a tankless minister for finance. Blow winds. Crack your cheeks. How rage you hurricanes. Spout fire. Spout Bit rain, spout, spout, spout. You, you'll burst the party. You're going to burst it. That's what you're going to do. You'll wreck it. Burning, scalding, stench, corruption. Fie, fie, fie. I, I myself have no leadership ambition. <laughs> All right, indeed. Now, uh, the tradition of the pantomime dame is a long and honourable one, and tonight we, as it were, uh, take a peek underneath the many skirts of one of the most wonderful old dames of Dublin, one of the greats. Some used to say Jack Cruz, there'll never, never be another dame like Jack Cruz. Others would say, no, no, give me Jimmy O'D any day. But for the true connoisseur, for, for those with a real eye for the genuine article, the greatest pantomime dame of them all was Jimmy Tunney. Ah, yeah. Yes, the yellow rose of Fingless himself, Biddy Tunney, the pride of the Doyle. Maureen, what was he like? Oh, you may well ask, Mike. He had the most outrageous outfit, all fornias and funny mm. hats and grey <laughs> suits. But what really set him apart was the way he would stand there looking at the front row as if they were muck. And he, he had this catchphrase, I love my leader. Well, <laughs> it used to bring the house down. <laughs> but not the leader, of course. <laughs> and, and it was that marvellous act accent he put on that people found so funny, wasn't it? Oh, absolutely, Mike. I mean, it was like nothing on earth. Trying to be posh, you know, <laughs> but coming out all wrong. I mean, no human being ever spoke like that, really, but it was so funny. Interrupt if you dare, but I'm full of hot air, and you know I can outlast you all. <clears throat> Excuse me, I didn't interrupt you, so let me say my bit. I'm a windy old gis, bitty tunny, the pride of the doyle. It really brings it all back, doesn't it? Uh, Maureen had her Christy, and Biddy had his who? Who was that? Ah, uh, yes, that was a great act. That was Charles. <laughs> And, and now, Charles, he was the boss, wasn't that the uh, idea? Yeah. And that was terrible funny, all right. <laughs> he also had, uh, what, a celebrated prop. Tell uh, us about he, that. He, he had this terrible long tongue. <laughs> and no one else actually, uh, this is the idea, no one else actually had a tongue as long as that, had they? Uh, that's right, no. <laughs> a terrible length of a tongue altogether. <laughs> and the trick of it was, uh, we'd all be waiting for it, you know, to see how far up Charles's... The uh, derriere. Uh, that's right, his arse, the tongue, would go. Hilarious, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> We'll never see his like again. Ah, with the help of God, Mike. Oh, my leader and king, I will do anything to make sure that my chalice won't fall. I'll shout till I'm hoarse and I'll grovel, of course, just to keep me in charge of the doyle. Me boys, Biddy Tunney, the pride of the doyle. Yeah, it's so nostalgic, isn't it? Uh, but David Norris, it was basically a drag act. Oh, absolutely. Biddy Tunney was in a tradition going back to the Victorian days. He, he was of that era, really, and very camp. Indeed, yes. O almost effeminate, really. Absolutely. And when he would shout down, Yes, are only a crowd of dirty poofters, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> just like an old uh, fishwife selling yeah. her wares. <laughs> we'll never forget Biddy Tunney, the pride of the doll. Uh, so he was actually, he was in fact known as Biddy Tunney. Well, he will be now, Mike. Elder statesman and prince, though I do like to mince my words, but that's no harm at all. The state's never seen such a pantomime queen. Biddy Tunney, the pride of the doyle. Me boys, Biddy Tunney, the pride of the doyle. Yes, of course. And he strongly opposed uh, the homosexual law reform, didn't he? Uh, that's right, Mike. He had quite a hysterical monologue he used to do about it. So let's finish then uh, with this tribute uh, on that famous monologue from Biddy Tunney, a great old relic and a wonderful pantomime dame. Who's the man to lead our country, says I? Charles J. Hoy, says I. 
Why is that, says he? Because he is not a homosexual, says I. I mean, homosexuals are all very well, and I don't say that we should send out the police to willy-nilly arrest them, says I. Or their willy-nillies, says he. That's enough of that talk, says I. These fellas are only fudge packers, aren't they? And shirt lifters, aren't they? And fishers of the brown trout. Ah, Charles, my dear Charles, welcome, welcome indeed. I'm very sorry you have been put to all this trouble. Thank you, Biddy, thank you. No, 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 please, Biddy, don't curtsy. There's there's no need for that. To, today we're, we're all just ordinary party members. I love you, Charles. I love my leader. Of course you do. I, I'm touched and moved by all this. No, please, Biddy, get up off your knees. You, you, you'll crease that lovely dress and put the bustle on out of shape. You will always be my leader. Well, of course, we all hope so. And may I say, Biddy, what a delightful wig that is you've got on. The little curls give it that charming devil-may-care quality. You really are done up to the nines for today's meeting. You've, you've done us all proud. Whoops! Mind yourself there, Charles. Someone has knocked over a glass of water and we don't want your princely feet stepping in it. Here, let me lie down in it. There, now, come on. Uh, varicose veins are oh, playing up again. Oh, jeez, my bunions. Now, Charles, you walk over me. It'll be my pleasure to protect you as best I can. Uh, uh, thank you, Biddy. Oh, my Charles, my king. I'm your slave and I fling myself at your feet. Here I fall. This vote is a farce. Let me please lick your arse. You're the emperor of Fianna Fall. I love you, Charles. Biddy Tunny, the pride of the doll. Uh, uh, right, uh, uh, Biddy, uh, get up off the floor there and start the meeting, will you? Yahoo! Okay, well, right. has everybody heard here? Yeah, now, now, that's the Kildare Street entrance in front of you, all right? Right, right. Okay, now, hold on, hold on, will you hold on? Now, come on, now, everyone. A quick practice now before I let you out of the van. Are you ready? Will you chop a little? It's the force. Will you, will you hold on, will you shut up? Now, here we go. Reynolds, Reynolds, Reynolds. Out, out, out. Reynolds, Reynolds, Reynolds. Out, out, out. That's good. Okay, you know that. Okay, okay. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's, this is my favourite one, right? We love you, Charlie. We do. Okay, we go. Yeah. We love you, Charlie. Okay, that's grand. We got that one out. All right, all right. Oh, Charlie, we love you. Shut up. Now don't forget, Albert's lost his stay car. So any suggestions on that one? Look. Oh, very good. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, 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 okay. Remember, it's a fiver each at the end of the day. Okay, okay, fiver each. Now, has everyone got that black card? Yeah. Right, now, out you go, and don't knock over that tape recorder on the way out. Charlie Bird, Charlie Bird, Charlie Bird. Charlie Bird, Charlie Bird, Charlie Bird. Well, last Tuesday I spoke to Robert Maxwell on the phone and invited him on the show and he was very excited by the prospect. Ach, Toshe Marav Anish, so that's that. Well, it was very difficult to find a replacement guest who had quite the same enormous waistline. <laughs> so instead, we have not one but two marvellous guests on the show tonight and at the same time too so a special double helping of applause for Pat O'Connor and Pat O'Connor <laughs> <laughs> sit down here the two of you oh, one on either side isn't that cozy Dogmamarshin <laughs> well I don't know which of you to talk to first so casting your votes boys must have been a very special thrill for you Pat you first <laughs> well, well usually we take it in towards the vote. vote first I go in then it will be my turn or sometimes the other way around, around. Oh, that really sounds like fun. A lot of people get very serious about voting and all that, but Bert Ogiv seem to have a sense of humour about it all. I'd say you laugh a lot, do you? We do when our man gets in, baby. <laughs> and why wouldn't your man get in with such an imaginative approach to our voting system? Turning to you now, Pat, is this imagination shown in all aspects of Fianna Fáil politics? Uh, indeed it is, baby. I always say it to Pat. 
where, where were two of any members of Fine Gael. Especially at election time, knock up. <laughs> well, all I can say is I'm spoiled for choice here tonight. <laughs> By crack in the goggin, won't we a stores? <laughs> but tell us now, is the rumour true that in fact there are also two Charlie Hohies? That's, That's right, right, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the one who met Bernie Cal. Uh, and the one who didn't. <laughs> well, that explains everything, doesn't it? And two Michael O'Kennedys. Is that possible? Yeah, yes, baby. baby. Uh, the, the one with no brains at all. all. And, and the, the one with uh, 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 no, no brains, brains at all at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, that will be extraordinary. <laughs> Any others we should know about? Well, well there are two Jericho's. Yes, of course, we can all see that. <laughs> and the vote of confidence motion, lads, how do you think it will go? Oh, oh Charlie, Charlie will win. win. Till the one. Oh, go fallen. But let's not dwell on the problems of Fianna Fall. Instead, a nacht, let's celebrate two of its heroes, Pat O'Connor, August Pat O'Connor, who <laughs> represent Estoy Lumsa, the secret of Fianna Fáil's success. And next week, Rini Ushla, watch carefully as I'll be presenting BB and the Late Late Show at the same time. Slaughterage, slow, goodbye, slow. Now, around the world on 80 grand. This week, Jerry, <laughs> Gerard Collins brings us on a sunshine trip to sunny Yugoslavia. Wonderful, wonderful Yugoslavia, goes an old song, and why not? Yugoslavia is a tranquil haven set in the Adriatic. It is a country where you can bask in warm sunshine and the lush tropical profusion of microphones. It wasn't always dust, but due perhaps to the present climate, mics are sprouting up all over the place. Sounds like my kind of holiday. I have been to many cities, Berlin with its friendly Berliners, London with its native Londoners, and Vukovar, where the local Vukers are friendly, alive ones that is. Rural life is the same whether it is Abbey Field or Zagreb. Lots of itinerant people wandering from place to place with household contents on their backs, some of them their own. And of course, a bit of inter-parish rivalry often does get out of hand, such as the exuberance of the local folk, but no worse than Ratkeel Sarsfields versus Abigail O'Connell's in the county championship. Enchanting Dubrovnik is a visit to a disappearing world, very rapidly disappearing, I might add. It's an interesting city, well worth visiting, full of medieval buildings, but hurry while they're still there. Bad enough to lose the medieval buildings, but worse still, all the restaurants. Local cuisine favourite of late includes dog, cat, Rat, and as a special delicacy, horse, especially if you can get it sometime within the first week after being shot. The local ritual of bombarding the city is spectacular and exciting and a wonderful treat to the spectator. To enjoy it, all you have to do is simply stand by and watch, and God only knows, the rest of us Europeans have certainly stood by and watched. The great thing about Yugoslavia these days, I find, is that you can cry your eyes out and there are so many others crying, nobody notices. I pleaded with the Federal Army. I said, you're going to wreck Dubrovnik. You're going to burst up the town centre, so you are. You're destroying Dubrovnik, so you are. You're showing frightening immaturity. Charles, you look tired. Is that chair uncomfortable? It must be. Here, Vincent Brady, come up here. There now, Charles. Sit down there on Vincent. That's it now. Is that comfortable, Charles? Uh, and that's fine. Thank you, Minnie. Uh, uh, thanks, Vincent. My, my pleasure, Tisha. I just hope that being down on all fours won't hinder my ability to cast my vote for you, sir. Uh, thank you, true and loyal friend. So let us take the vote, remembering just two important things. One, a vote for Charles will bring shouts and cheers of approval from the rooftops of the nation and blessings will shower on each and every one of you. And two, vote freely as your conscience dictates. Happy days are here again. La la la. PJ, PJ. What a way that telescope and long range microphone right. business. And listen right. to me, you're almost fidgeting well, with gadgets. Well, I'm sorry, boss. I have a question for you. Yeah, yes, boss. Eleven ones is what? Uh, Eleven. Eleven twos is? It's, it's only twenty two, boss. Eleven threes? Thirty three. Eleven fours? Forty four. Uh, what's next? Oh, please, what's me? I'm sure. Me, 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 boss. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. No, back of the class. Mara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Eleven fives. Fifty-five, boss. <laughs> Fifty-five. 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 